So today, in a uh, desperate attempt to find something interesting to talk about for this vlog, I have come to a place in uh, Salem, New Hampshire, known as America's Stonehenge. So it has also variously been called Mystery Hill. <laughs> and uh, I'm walking along the nature trail right now to get to the site. What this is, is a theoretically, possibly prehistoric uh, Native American or maybe Viking or maybe Celtic shaman, um, druidy type people uh, came to America and threw a bunch of rocks on top of each other. <laughs> Look at the size of these hunks of granite. They're just enormous. And uh, it's amazing to think about why these people were doing this. What kind of important purpose? You know, one chamber or, you know, one little storehouse underground. Absolutely, you can see that happening for people to store food and things like that. But this is a, you know, it's not a huge site, but it's got a lot of building going on here. This is what they call the Oracle Chamber. I'm standing completely upright right now and there's still another about, about another foot over my head. This is a very, very large uh, enclosure. And um, this is kind of the pride and joy of America's Stonehenge. What's interesting about this is there's a couple of features that have been the heart of some speculation about what happens here. <clears throat> right next to where I have the camera is what they call the speaking tube. That is a little open area about you know a foot tall and a couple inches wide heads right through the rocks here and comes out underneath what they call the sacrificial altar or the sacrificial stone which is which I'll show you right now and then right underneath there is this small alcove that you can't see if you're coming in from the main entrance and there is a little tiny hole at the bottom of the alcove. It's just long enough and, lo and large enough to fit a person lying down. And um, the speculation is that this was used as some sort of uh, ritual chamber of some sort. So the speaking tube would have been used to, you know, the booming echoing voice of God coming out of the, the earth itself, you know, and uh, this chamber might have been used for some sort of initiatory purpose. And somebody might have been hiding in that uh, little alcove here, they call the bed, I think and uh, might have spoken to somebody from, you know, out of the rocks itself. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting structure and it feels weird to be in here. I don't know, I can't, I can't really explain why, but it does, it's, it feels a little strange. This mound right here, where you see the rocks and then the uh, dead fall grass on top, and then the sacrificial table, and then all of that, all of that back there is the Oracle Chamber. It actually runs underneath that entire, that entire place there. And this is kind of like a little 
I don't know, a little a tiny little canyon, man-made tiny little canyon, standing stone, some two standing stones in fact, and some paths that go around, and one that follows this long rock wall, and then another roof over there. Some people put some time into this. And here's what gets the pagans and the conspiracy theorists so excited about this particular site. The, uh, the claim is that there are all of these standing stones throughout the site. And there are. You can see one over here. See that little pokey up dude over there. You can kind of see behind me. Here's one of the standing stones, right? And then all of these kind of stones in all directions throughout line up with different points in the solar and lunar calendars, so they say, uh, solstices and equinoxes, to the point where local uh, Wiccan and pagan communities actually come here uh, on the solstices and they have uh, rituals, and I've yet to actually go to one, to be honest with you, despite living uh, 30 minutes away from it for a number of years, but uh, I should probably do that someday. This is the summer solstice sunset stone. Uh, and when you are standing in the very center of the America Stonehenge site, we're in that pavilion that I was standing in earlier, at the, so, at the sunset of the summer solstice, the sun will set directly behind this stone. Which is fairly interesting from an archaeological point of view, I would say. And there's no doubt that these stones were very specifically placed upright like this and pointy with, you know, points sticking up in these kind of larger rock wall structures that, uh, crisscross the entire site. You know, they absolutely had to have been intentionally placed, but uh, for what, uh, you know, I guess is some, uh, some speculation. One also has to consider, and this has come up a lot lately, the idea that um, ancient and primitive peoples could not have possibly done something so interesting as to set up an astronomical observatory out of stone uh, before the Europeans got here. So I think that's one reason why, and it's a, you know, it's a little bit racism, quite frankly. It's one reason why uh, some people want to believe that Europeans came over and built this before the Native Americans, or instead of, I should say, the Native Americans who very possibly could have, uh, you know, done all those interesting calculations and figured that out. Um, Tomorrow, I am taking my first steps in the commandery of uh, the York Rite, which is a part of Freemasonry. Um, I, am, uh, I am being knighted in the illustrious Order of the Red Cross. I think that's how I am supposed to say it. I don't know if that's actually an accurate description of, uh, of any of it, because I haven't gone through it, but, um, but there you have it. So uh, that will be an interesting experience. Um, the York Rite, in general, for, well, for those of you who don't know uh, about Freemasonry, uh, there are a bunch of smaller organizations um, which you have to be a Mason in order to belong to. Uh, these include the York Rite, the Scottish Rite, the Tall Cedars of Lebanon, the Shrine, um, things like that. So, you know, those Shriners that you see in the parades and the tiny little cars, those are actually Masons. I, I love Freemasonry, I really do. I think it's, it's a great organization uh, and um, does a lot of good work with uh, charities and things and, and that's, that's, that's a very important part, I think, of, of uh, American history and, and history of, of the world in general, the things that the Masons have done. But, um, I've been thinking a lot about feminism lately, and I've been reading a lot about it, and, uh, and I, I think I've got a topic for another vlog that's going to come out of that. Um, I've never really given it much thought, and I'm coming to understand this because I really haven't had to as, as a white male American person. Um, so as such, I I wonder if it's... I wonder if it's not the best thing to belong to a group that is very specifically all male. I'm not making any decisions and I don't think that Freemasonry should, uh, well, I'm not sure if I think the Freemasonry should make any, any changes. Just something I'm thinking about. You know, why can't women be Freemasons? I, uh, 
I, I'd like to say I'm sure there was a good reason for it at some point, and maybe there still continues to be. I I just I don't know I don't know what that good reason could be I guess. And now I'd like to point out to you many interesting rocks. Totally forgot they have alpacas here. How's it going? Alpacas are weird. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you had a lovely time. I certainly did. So, uh, see you next week.